Hey neighbor, welcome back to Beyond AR TV. My name is John and it's time for another year in countdown for 2019. This is a little bit more of a niche list, but it's also something that I had a surprising amount of requests for and you guys really seem to connect with the one that I put out for 2018. So today I'm talking about the top 10 best and the top 10 worst album covers for 2019. Hey, let's not waste any time though. I wanna get right into this. I don't wanna make the video any longer than it needs to be. So if you happen to be new to the channel, then please hit that subscribe button, ring the bell so you get notified when I post future videos like this, and drop a like because a like really does go a long way. And today, we're starting with the top 10 worst. Let's get the bad taste out of our mouth first. Tuvlo at number 10, Sunshine Kitty. What are we doing here, Tuvlo? She's a Swedish pop artist that has had some very mixed results in her short career thus far. I feel that this album is something that I haven't really brought myself to listen to, maybe partially because of this album cover. I mean, it's a poorly animated cat. It's sitting there next to her Sunshine Kitty. I understand that this is part of the draw for the aesthetic for the era. Maybe it's intentionally bad, but it's still really bad. She's kind of posed and leaning over some sort of sink and the ass is just sticking out and the cat is sitting there right next to her looking stoned out of its mind. So this is one of those late night pictures that your friend takes of you and it accidentally gets posted to Instagram stories and you look at it and you're like, fuck, why was that ever taken? Tuflo saw that and said, Let's make it an album cover. The number nine spot goes to A Bath Full of Ecstasy, the latest album from the English synth pop and producer group Hot Chip. As much as I do enjoy this group's music, I also have to say, this looks like one of those bad graphic design is my passion memes. It's like a rainbow kind of splurged halfway and just poured out and leaked down on this album cover. The font is atrocious. The spacing is terrible. It's so opposite of aesthetically pleasing that I look at this and just want to vomit exactly the colors of whatever we got on this fuckery. Number eight is a four-way tie. It's my list, I make the rules, okay? Sorry for sounding a little bit defensive there, but my god, can we stop with the bland-ass album covers? I could have picked way more, but I just picked four that I could find and thought of and was like, wow, that is really underwhelming. It's not the worst thing ever, but you could do so much more, so why not at least try and make it interesting? MCID, the unfortunate cringe fest of an album by Highly Suspect is one of the candidates that I selected here. It simply says MCID, which stands for My Crew is Dope. Can't say that without laughing or smiling. And it's printed on just a black background with a white font. Nothing is going on here. Stop it. The next one that comes up as a part of this tie is The Regrets with How Do You Love. Wow, it's it's hands lifting up and how do you love? And there is nothing else to it. It's a white ass background, some hands lifted up, and the name of the album. I can't help but also throw some shade at Pony by Rex Orange County as well. He looks like Chandler from Mr. Beast in a confused moment, just zoning out, and you chose it as the album cover. Not even any text, no font on screen, just your damn face and the explicit material in the corner. Also, throwing Papa Roach, who do you trust, under the bridge. I mean, this looks so poorly designed. I looked it up just to make sure that I wasn't looking at low-res quality versions of this album cover. Nope, it's just uh, actually really bad. And in fact, I lifted it straight from their website, and we just have these arms, like, sticking out a hand out of the ocean. Who do you trust? This looks like something that would have come out in the early 2000s. It's so bad. It's so clear that no thought went into this whatsoever. So that is the last of this four-way tie at number eight. I don't want to be the one to make this weird, and it's not about that. But at number seven, Remind Me Tomorrow by the singer-songwriter Sharon Van Etten. This is actually a pretty solid album that I did enjoy, but I just feel... Weird looking at this, it's Sharon as a child, she's nude in the album cover, it's just an innocent kid thing, they're laying around, lounging around, she's got some sort of crown on and some beads, 
Her brother is over there in a diaper. I assume it's her brother. And everything is scattered about. And remind me tomorrow. Ha ha, that's the joke because there's clutter everywhere. Life's a mess. Kind of funny, but also awkward because Naked Child on the album cover, nothing else. Clearly just a home printing right here. And uh, I really don't know what to think about it. I feel uncomfortable, and uncomfortable is uh, not a good feeling to get. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of looking at it already. Number six, divinely uninspired to a hellish extent. Can we give out awards for like worst album titles as well? This is uh, Louis Capaldi. It looks like this moody teenager sulking in front of a cloud backdrop. You put a little bit of a red light on him. Oh my god, it kind of looks like he's in hell. But there's clouds in the background, and he's got his Chuck Taylor Converse's on, and he's just sitting there pondering all these great deep things about life. Well, have fun with that, Lewis. I've heard that you're extremely funny. Uh, that doesn't translate to anything else that you've done music-wise, though, because, oh my god, Basic White Guy with Guitar is written all over this, even in its album cover form. Look at this thing, guys. Look at this. Can, can, can we make some sort of John Wick joke here? Because Candlewick in the head? I don't know. Uh, number five, Sleeping With Sirens, their latest album, How It Feels To Be Lost. What is up with all this edge over here, guys, that I'm about to cut myself on? This album is uh, very forgettable. A smoking candle wick is in the place of a head here, and maybe it's saying like, oh, my light has been burned out. My light has been stolen from me. I don't know what the parallels that we're supposed to draw are. Is it supposed to be deep as hell? Or is it just Kellen Quinn acid tripping again, thinking he was onto a good idea? <laughs> oh man, I just, I think of the worst jokes. I think of the worst things when I see this album cover. Number four goes to Head Above Water by the Canadian singer-songwriter Avril Lavigne, a pop artist that's been around for quite a while, not as successful as she used to be, and I hate that because I do think that Avril is talented, but also she's working with the wrong producers, and this album cover is so laughable. This looks like Jenny from Forrest Gump when she tried to play guitar up on stage, but she was nude and getting heckled. <laughs> I may not be a smart man, but I know what good album art is, Avril. If you've seen Forrest Gump, you get my jokes. If not, it's still kind of hilariously bad because it looks like an Instagram model that went out to have a shoot with a guitar that she probably doesn't play at all. I know Avril actually does, but still, this looks so try-hard that I can't forgive it. Speaking of overcompensating and trying way too hard, in number three, we have Taylor Hawkins from the Foo Fighters with his side project, Taylor Hawkins and the Coattail Riders. Get the money. Look at that money shot right there. I mean, there's $100 bills floating in a hot tub. It looks like they're in a Corona beer commercial about to float out to fucking sea. This looks like the most dude bro -y thing ever. And I cannot stand that type of culture. I mean, they look like they probably high-five each other and say, Yeah, bro, uh, rub some lotion on me. Uh, it's fine. It's, it's not gay. Not gay. You know what's even worse than the beer bongs in Bentley's album cover? That actually isn't the worst thing ever. It just looks really cheap to me. Well, it would be a ripoff of said cover that looks like it's trying to be that, and also space, because space is deep and we're intergalactic warriors. It's Chase Atlantic at number two with their album cover for Phases. And spoiler alert, I was not a fan of this album at all, but this album cover is just trash too. Do you know what I mean when I say this design looks way too busy? Like there's too much going on here. We see text in the top left corner where it's like Chase Atlantic Phases, Initiate, Interstellar, Chase Atlantic, and then it's got this really bad font that, I don't know, it looks like it was like on a website in the early 2000s before we really got things going in the internet age. Phases, Chase Atlantic, so we've already said it twice, and then we have it again on official property of Chase Atlantic. Another warning tag here, an explicit thing here, and then a label down at the bottom, and then this awful, like, deep-fried purple color, and we see this space cadet that's actually a drone coming back down. There is way too much going on, and none of it works at all. It's just flat-out ugly.
We may have seen some horrifyingly bad album cover images up to this point, but nothing could prepare us for this. Look, it's Chris Brown's head in some sort of like, I, I don't know. I really genuinely don't know. It looks like a bunch of aliens are surrounding him and then it looks like the Taco Bell logo is about to fly down. It's actually a spaceship. It was a trap all along. Illuminati, Taco Bell, Chris Brown? It's Chris Brown with purple ass hair. He doesn't have hair like that at all. In fact, doesn't he have like longer braids at this point? So how does this make sense? He's trying to look like some sort of intergalactic alien. What's everyone's obsession with space travel? In fact, he's just making fuckboy songs that have nothing to do with that unless he's talking about fucking a girl in space. You know what? I actually haven't heard the album, so I wouldn't put that past him. Let me know if you've actually heard it and he does sing about that because I, I, I genuinely probably wouldn't be that surprised. Ooh, it got so heated during that last segment that I had to go run out and keep a haircut appointment that I had. So, hats back on, let's move into the top 10 best album covers of the year. And I'm by no means an artist or an art critic, but these are just some ones that really stood out to me in a year where I don't feel that a ton of album covers really popped out of the mix. Snagging the number 10 spot, we have the Scottish post-punk group The Twilight Set. They were a discovery that I made this year, and I'm so glad that I stumbled onto their music. It was a recommendation from a fan, actually. And this album art that goes along with this fantastic release that did make my list of the best albums of the year sees a couple of people that kind of look like faded, almost washed out versions of themselves. Skeletons melting away like candle wax, if you will. It's just kind of tattered in the best way. We see fragments of these people. I love the fact that the font is kind of almost a little bit faded out as well, obscured. It's just one of those things that you look at it and you say, you know what? That is the perfect fit for the music that is on this album. Rapper, singer, artist extraordinaire Hoodie Allen works his way in at number 9 with Whatever USA. This is his latest full-length album. It's a short LP, but still a very fun one. This is a very enjoyable cover to me because it reminds me of like a scene from The Hangover. We see a hoodie next to the car. They're out in the desert and then there's a billboard in the background for this fictional town, whatever USA. It was just a clever idea because Really, it doesn't take a ton to execute this, whether it was shot on a green screen or on the side of the road, I'm not entirely sure. But still, like I said, maybe uh, maybe it reminds you of The Hangover if you've seen it. Still, a little help. Shut up! Number eight goes to the album art for Panorama by Lotta Spute. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, but whatever it is, I think it definitely goes with the themes of the album. There's a lot about healing crystals, grief, how to maybe process these feelings into something else. And to me, this looks like somebody standing in front of what could be their future and they're not entirely sure how to heal. You're just kind of at a crossroads in life. And obviously, You Ascendant is the final song on the album. And to me, it almost looks like there's a beam of light coming down on whatever this monument statue or people are. And then it's being lifted up, perhaps, which would tie into the You Ascendant thing. I'm not sure. Whatever it is, I, I think it looks gorgeous. I love the color palette used here and the overall design scheme. Well done to everybody who worked with Law Dispute on the art direction for this album release because it's fantastic. In number seven, we have producer Mark Ronson with his latest solo release, Late Night Feelings. This is very representative of the music that lies within. It's such a clean design as well. It's like a disco ball heart that's split down the middle, but it also looks like a locket that maybe one would keep. And then obviously the breakup ensues and the locket is split off. The relationship's no longer there. This was an enjoyable release overall. The music was really solid and entertaining, and I just love this design because it proves that a minimal concept can really execute quite well. 
I think a lot of people would agree with me on this one making the top 10, but at number 6 we have Wise Blood with the album cover for Titanic Rising. Natalie Maring, aka Wise Blood, put out a release that just covered a lot of different emotional ground. And here in this album cover, we see her underwater, things just kind of floating, and she's in her room, her hair is up behind her because she's sinking down further. And again, this isn't too on the nose, but it's also like, haha, I'm kind of drowning over here. Probably send out that SOS right now. The fact that she's also just kind of looking over at the camera too, and all of the reflective light that's like above the ceiling, we can see that it's just rising up closer and closer to the top, and maybe there's no way out. I just really enjoy this one. It's something that if you throw on the album, instead of me putting on like a visualizer or something, I don't mind just sitting there looking at the album cover. Cracking the top five, we have the latest release, Breathe, by the Midwest emo revival band Tiny Moving Parts. There's plenty of ties in to nature and kind of hopeful, uplifting sentiments in the record, but also I love the way that translated to the artwork and the music videos that surrounded this. It just had a very similar palette, so they executed well there. You can see that in the music video for Vertebrae and also Bloody Nose, which really reminds me of the album cover. I saw this and it's like, you, you wanna own a copy of this album. It's just, it's pretty. It's kind of serene, comforting, if you will. You can see the mountains in the background, the sunflowers and the other various flower types. And what I believe is a fox standing there. My dad would be so disappointed. He's a science teacher, he was for 35 years and I can't even identify a fox on an album cover. Cheating the system again, we've got a two-way tie alert over here at number four, but it's from the same band, and they released two albums in the same year, and they kind of go hand in hand, so I hope you'll forgive me. It's Foles, with everything not saved will be lost, parts one and two, claiming the number four position. We're gonna talk about part one first. I love that the same photographer captured both of these images, but also captured very different things. And for part one, we see this beautiful color scheme. I mean, the colors of nature, this red tree outside of a big house. It doesn't look like anything all that fancy necessarily, but you look at it and you're like, okay, this is memorable. This sticks in my mind and I'm wanting to look at it more. And I like that they did the design down the side with foals, everything not safe will be lost. You've got the track list and everything over there. And they do that for part two as well. And what I love about the second part is that you've got something that kind of looks serious. You've got flowers on a grave, it looks like. You've got a cross stuck down but also it kind of alludes to some of the darker themes that we do here, and not just part one, but also part two. And this one to me, just the light, the way that the sun is coming in, it's just a beam across this land that's normally looked at as a very sad, melancholic, reflective place. You come to the cemetery to maybe see somebody you loved, or somebody that your family loved and you're remembering them or remembering something, but we see this painted in almost a more optimistic light, which I can really get behind. Number three, Pang by Caroline Polachek, formerly of the band Chairlift. This art direction here is just wow. I got a wow factor when I saw this. It looks like something straight out of the 80s, but also a sleek modern design as well. We see Caroline in this outfit that does feel retro in a way, even some leather pants, but she's climbing up this ladder in the sky that seemingly looks like it's leading to nowhere, and whether that's meant to be commentary or not, it kind of feels deep. Also, what is this look on her face? I love it. It's like the borderline between confusion and love and trying to be serious and whatever else. I'm not entirely sure, but I don't think we're supposed to. I think it's just a very badass looking image, and we see the clouds in the back a little bit of blue sky, but also she's climbing up this ladder to somewhere in the middle of a storm. My number two pick might surprise some people simply because I haven't talked about it outside of when I reviewed the album. And while I think I've cooled off on some of my feelings towards it, I don't know, it just didn't resonate as much as I thought it would. This album cover has the stamp of approval from me. It really surprised me the first time I looked at it. And I saw it, I was like, oh, that looks cool. Even at first glance, I'm like, okay, I see all the wires. Everything's all connected. It's suspending this person here and you've got the cool looking corn logo. But then I was like, wait a second, hold up. I'm looking at this. Oh, 
I thought it was a man or a woman inside of there. There's actually nothing because the nothing is the name of the album. It's just a bunch of cables and then it's holding up no one because it's just more cables. That's right, at number one, we have Pup with Morbid Stuff, and that means that my album of the year, spoiler alert, sorry, and my album cover of the year actually line up and match. This is such a wonderful representation of what's going on in that record. I love the kind of off pink background, and then the design that looks like a cartoon from the 60s or 70s, and all of the kids are at the party, the jukebox is on, and they're walking around in circles, but everybody's got blindfolds, and knives, and they're stabbing at the balloons, and perhaps at each other, showcasing that in real life, we're all fighting, we're all trying to cut our way through to whatever, and we're tearing each other limb from limb, except, uh, more metaphorically. Don't fuck with that dude in the green tank top, though. He's got the biggest knife, and my god, he looks like he's already cut the person on the far right's knee open. I see some holes in the fabric there, so maybe, uh, maybe let him just have the chair. Any and all thoughts are welcomed in the comments section down below. Please drop a like on this video while you're here. A like does go a long way. And also, it kind of lets me know that you're enjoying the album cover videos because this is only the second time that I've ever done this. If you want to see last year's rendition of this, then tap the card here or tap here to see all of my year-end countdowns for 2019. Social's in the description, and I'll see you soon for more on Beyond ARTV.